How do you plan a park in Jurassic World Evolution 2? If you've asked yourself that question, if you are struggling with coming up with a park layout, if you find yourself staring at an empty map, not knowing what to do, if your recent build went off the rails and didn't turn out the way you had hoped, this is the video for you. I'm going to show you how to plan a park from scratch in five steps. I have a confession to make. I don't usually plan my parks. But with these five steps, even I can plan a park and that speaks to how easy these steps are. Step one, come up with a theme for your park. Having a core concept is a crucial starting point to guide the entire process. Just another dinosaur park doesn't cut it. Having a more specific idea in mind is going to give you inspiration. It's going to help you make interesting dinosaur choices. Not every park needs to be an all species park and is going to keep you on track during your build. So before even booting up the game, have a little brainstorm and think about what you really want to build and give yourself the assignment, dinosaur park doesn't count. Step two is pick a map and if you're on an older console, pick a building era. Make choices that fit with your theme. But if your theme works on any map, I'd advise you to pick a map slash biome that you don't build on that often to help make your park look different from most of your other builds. When picking a map, you can go two routes, the total freedom of the square maps or the pre-shaped maps. If you build on a pre-shaped map, spend some time flying around the map, looking at the shape and finding interesting areas like nice views to use or difficult areas to be mindful of. You might find that a pre-shaped map is easier for you to build on because you can draw inspiration from it, whereas the massive blank canvas of a square map can be overwhelming. For step three, it's still not quite time to head into the game. First, go looking for inspiration or references. Those two are not the same, but Google is a bottomless source for both. Some of my go-to search terms are public park concept art, city layout, urban planning, and landscaping design. Collect images that you like the look of that are going to help you with your park layout. Save an image, even if it's just a small part of it that you like, because you can stitch multiples together and still make it look like one cohesive whole if you pay attention to a tip later on in this video. If you've chosen to build on a square map in step two, consider turning it into a custom island, so Google island shapes that you want to recreate. Okay, so I think think in terms of inspiration and reference as two distinct things. And to put a label on it and make it maybe a little bit more clear, I'd call it inspiration versus replication. And that's something for you to consider when you go hunting for images. Take this image, for example. If I use this image for inspiration, I break it down to its core elements and I implement those elements in my own build in my own unique way. If I use this image for replication, I'm going to copy this in-game as well as I can, given the in-game restrictions, of course. That means the same river shape, two bridges at the same distance, a parking lot in the same shape as this one, etc. Now converting something not Jurassic World Evolution 2 into Jurassic World Evolution 2 is something that becomes easier with practice. If you want in-game references for inspiration or replication, there's plenty of that on the channel. Check out the tours, the habitat speed builds, and the tips and tricks videos, which also include examples. There's playlists for those, which I will link at the end of this video. Step four, make a sketch. And there are three degrees to this. One, you can sketch out the full park layout. Two, you can sketch out a number of key areas that you have a clear vision for and then connect the dots later. Or three, just sketch out an entry area and let the rest flow from there. For the purpose of this video, I planned out a park including a full layout sketch, which I did in Photoshop. I'll talk more about how I approach this later in the video. However, super important, write this down. No matter how much or how little you sketch and plan, always stay flexible. It's difficult to get the scaling of buildings just right in a sketch, so making adjustments on the fly will probably be an inevitable necessity for any park builder, and keep yourself open to new ideas as you're working. Sketching is just a different way of brainstorming, where one thing leads to another. You see the shapes come together, and it'll give you new ideas. Don't put any pressure on yourself to make a perfect drawing, because that's not necessary to benefit from this step. 
If you can and want to do a detailed sketch like I did, awesome. But if you can't or just don't want to, set out to just create a guideline for yourself. Treat your sketch as a cheat sheet to look at when you're struggling during your build. You can sketch on paper, on your PC or iPad in whatever program you have available and are comfortable with, or you can even sketch directly in Jurassic World Evolution 2 itself using terrain paints. It makes sketching a little harder, but at least you have references on hand for the correct size of buildings and the thickness of the path. And of course, working within the map itself means you don't have to find a way to convert the size and shape of it onto a piece of paper or into a different program. Figure out what works for you. Here are some key things to keep in mind while you are coming up with your park layout. Remember your theme and try to stay consistent. Let habitats and guest areas fit into each other nicely following the same lines. Kind of like nesting dolls or a puzzle, it should all fit together nicely. Consider adding zones to your park. For example, separate areas for herbivores and carnivores or grouping the animals together based on the time zone or the region of the world that they originate from. While building, you can really lean into those zones with the decor, with the types of decorations, the colors of the buildings, and of course, the path types. Plan for terrain elevation. Right from the start, keep in mind that by the end, your map shouldn't be completely flat. Terrain elevation is so important in making a park look good. This does, however, mean that you need to reserve some space for the slopes. Keep in mind that not every inch of space has to be either a habitat or a hotel or any other guest facility. Leave space for gardens and plazas. If you want to use the monorail glitch, you have to take that into account from the very start. If you've made your sketch anywhere other than in-game, use the terrain paints to copy your sketch into the map. This is time consuming. If you want to skip this, you can. And Maybe you should, but if you put a lot of effort into your sketch and it spans the full map like mine did, it's worth redrawing it in game to make sure everything turns out as planned. You don't have to get into the details of your sketch, just lay down reference points for yourself and this is a good opportunity for you to check if you got the sizing of the buildings more or less right. Having some experience with a controller now, I do think sketching in game is a lot harder with a controller than it is with a mouse. If you have that same experience, I think you're better off adjusting this step by just making a couple of markers in the map as reference points. What I did was I used the grid that I talked about in a video before. This grid is basically a cheat code. It's a drawing technique that makes it really easy to copy a reference into the game. I've used it for Mini Nublar, Mini Manticore Island, and currently Mini Sorna, the weekly park building series on the channel. Subscribe to see how that one turns out. I have the same grid in Photoshop as I do in game, and I drew my park layout right onto it. This allowed me to get a very accurate recreation of it in game. To make this layout, I literally traced parts of the references that I liked, and then through trial and error, I found a way to connect the disjointed elements that I had basically stolen to turn them into a cohesive whole by extending and following some of the same lines. Then, using my grid as reference, I redrew it in-game. For step five, all that is left to do is just build your park. That is easier said than done, but with your plan, you have something to guide you through the process and to fall back on. It's like a safety net. I'd advise you to start by laying down the big stuff, starting with buildings, just like the innovation center, visitor center, aviaries, lagoons, Lay down path and the fencing of your regular habitats and at this point don't get lost in the details quite yet because as you start building you might realize you want to make some changes and that's going to be so crushing if making a change requires you to delete hours worth of detail work. I'm going to be building this park live on stream every Saturday right here on the channel and it's going to be an all species park so if you want to watch the process of a park slowly coming together subscribe and ring the bell. This video was all about planning, which is why we're glossing over the actual building, the execution of the plan. But if you could use some tips and tricks for that part of it, I'm linking some more helpful videos at the end here for you to check out. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time, enjoy the game.